Hello everyone, it's that time of year when everyone's turning on the heating and it may be your first heating season with a heat pump and you might be overwhelmed by the cost. You might think that your heat pump's really expensive and it's going to ruin you, but you need to know a little bit of information to know whether the heat pump is actually running efficiently or not. So I want to just very briefly give you a little overview, a little snapshot of what I've found out, what I've experienced myself and try and share some of that knowledge that I've acquired over the last couple of years of researching heat pumps, having my own heat pump in my own home and living with it. So here's a few things on a few slides to get you thinking. So you need to find some information because without this information, the only other way that you can actually ascertain whether your heat pump is not running efficiently or is very expensive is to try and find someone that you can pay to come in and work all of this out for you. Finding that person is very difficult and can be very expensive but with armed with a little bit of knowledge you'll be able to find the answers for yourself and you'll be able to determine whether there's an actual problem with your installation or whether it just may be some settings that need tweaking and I have helped quite a few people over the last year or so just sharing my experience and quite often we found just tweaking a few settings can see the efficiency really skyrocket. Anyway, let me stop waffling. There's a couple of Facebook groups. These could be absolutely pivotal in helping you find out um, how you can improve your system. But before you go to these groups, you're still going to need a certain amount of information. Otherwise, you won't get any good answers. And these groups, whilst they're, there's loads of really experienced engineers and very knowledgeable people in there, beware some of the comments because there's there's some absolute nutters in there as well. And there's people who are anti-heat pumps and there's also people who are meaning well, well-meaning, but they can still give you poor advice. So be careful, be vigilant, but Go armed with this information and you should get the best stuff. Anyway, first thing, you need to know which heat pump you have. The amount of people who come on and ask questions in their group, in that group, they don't even know which heat pump they have. All of the heat pumps do, you know, generally they do the same thing, but the controls work differently. The terminology is different between the different manufacturers. You're going to need, need to know. So, for example, mine is manufactured by Valent. The model is the Aratherm Plus. And that's important because the Aerotherm is different to the Aerotherm Plus. And mine is 7 kilowatts, the kind of heat uh, output, the badge in any way that they put on it. What is your heat loss? This is quite an important one. A lot of people come onto the group and they say, ah, it's costing me £100 to just heat my room for a day. But then it turns out they basically live in Windsor Castle and they leave the doors open all day long for the dog to come in and out. Um if we have a heat loss to work from, then people can give you pretty accurate ideas of roughly how much you should be spending. Of course, habits and lifestyles and and comfort levels vary, but at least you've got a heat loss, then you know roughly how the house should be performing. So here's an example. You should have something like this when you had your heat pump installed. Um, this shows the size of the room, it shows the temperature that it's designed to, and it shows how much power is required to heat that room, okay? So overall for this property is 5,820 watts. That is otherwise expressed as 5.82 kilowatts. Um, that's just a brief snapshot, an overview, but you are going to need to know your heat loss. Otherwise, everything else is kind of meaningless. And anyone that gives you any advice without knowing the heat loss is going to be very vague in general at best. What are your design temperatures? I'm here in the south of the UK, so my design temperature is minus 1.8 degrees centigrade. And so that's the, the outdoor temperature that they designed the system to work at this flow temperature here of 45 degrees. So I know that my systems can still run efficiently down to minus 1.8 degrees and that's a sustained minus 1.8 degrees. That's not just for a 30 minute window or an hour that it just dips to a very low temperature. That's a sustained outside temperature. If you're in the north of the country, yours may be designed to minus three degrees um, outside temperature, but this flow temperature is quite critical, okay? 45 degrees is, um, yeah, it's important to know. Some systems out there have been designed to 50, 55 degrees. There's other systems that are designed to 35 degrees. The lower this flow temperature is, the more efficient your system should run in theory, as long as it's set up correctly. How are your controls set? This is important. If you uh, 
you should be using the manufacturer controls in most cases because that will work best with your heat pump and you get the most efficiency from it. A lot of people who come on the group, they're having issues because they've got loads of different room stats and loads of different zones and the heat pumps getting conflicting, confusing messages and all of these controls and thermostats will fight in against each other. But whatever system you're using to control your heat pump, you need to be able to clearly explain to people in these groups how you're going about controlling your heat pump. So for me, this is my Senso Comfort controller. It's the, <clears throat> it's the only control in my house. And actually, I use it on full weather compensation mode. So this doesn't relay the internal temperature to the heat pump. It doesn't reference that at all. I'm using the outdoor temperature sensor to feed, trickle feed heat into my home, which is typically the most efficient way. Not necessarily the most cost effective way, depending on how you look at it. But that's a more complicated debate for another day. Um, how are you measuring your energy consumption? I've seen quite a few people who they just look at their smart meter uh, in home display and they just panic. And actually, sometimes it's turned out that they they're using something else and they've, you know, it's it's a draw from an electric car charge or it's the oven or even electric underfloor heating. I've seen in the past that someone accused the heat pump of ruining them financially when actually it was their electric underfloor heating. So. Most heat pumps have a really clear um, inbuilt energy meter that you'll be able to access through the app or through the wall controller. Sometimes maybe there's a web portal or something, but you need to know exactly how much the heat pump, just the heat pump has consumed. A lot of heat pumps will also have a dedicated like electricity meter. It'll look very similar to your normal electricity meter that you'll find, you know, by your fuse board or maybe outside in a meter cabinet but you may have one internally that was put in line just for your heat pump if you've got one of those absolutely great because then you know it's very reliable it's independent from the heat pump and you can give accurate readings you can take a reading let the heat pump run for a week take another reading then you know exactly how many kilowatt hours you've used over a week that information is critical when you start combining that with a heat loss and you can have a look at historical data of how cold it's been outside then you can see ah is that performing correctly or not here's some other ideas if you're with octopus energy like i am on uh, i've got a dashboard which shows my whole home energy consumption as i said you may have one of these electricity meters um, installed in between uh, if you've got a solar inverter like this that may be able to um show some of your energy consumption and depending on how it's set up your app um, in my case, my Valent, my Valent app um, shows me the data for that. And then there's other third party apps like uh, this one is Loop, for example. There are some other solutions out there, but this is just an idea. You just need data. Um, once again, once you've got that information, go into one of these groups and lay that data out as clearly and concisely as you can and you will get some sensible reasonable responses and the responses may just be yes that's correct that's how much your heat pump should be costing you or it may be oh your your um flow temperature is too high maybe you need to lower your weather compensation curve that's what we see a lot in these heat pump groups on facebook as we're discussing things it seems that installers don't want to leave people cold rightly so they don't want people to experience discomfort so the 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 default weather compensation curve is always multiple steps higher than it should be and only you as a homeowner living in there you know complete fairness to the installers they can't live in your home for two weeks and dial it in and tweak it so it's the most efficient system but you can so you can just adjust that weather compensation curve down and you can really reduce your costs we've seen in this group we've seen people who were paying hundreds of pounds per month on their energy bills because their heat pump was set up incorrectly uh, heat curve issues or fighting with the underfloor heating room stats or their immersion heater was just on all the time or something sometimes they've knocked 75 or 80 percent off their energy consumption by discussing on this group and finding tricks and tips i hope that's been helpful for you most people who watch this video won't like or subscribe but i hope that you do thanks for watching until the next one